Today, I propose to recall Mike Tyson's best fight, when he not only became the youngest world heavyweight champion, but also kept his promise and took revenge on the offender Muhammad Ali. The beginning of the 80s marked the end of an entire era of the greatest Muhammad Ali. Two fights and two losses in a row, with the first fight, which took place in October 1980 against his former sparring partner Larry Holmes, ended before the bell in the 10th round. I did what was required, I love him, for me he is a great athlete. Did you feel sad defeating your idol? Certainly. Everyone comes and goes and I'm sorry he's gone. He has incredible faith in himself, he thought he would win, and gave me a chance, there is nothing wrong with that. I have always respected him, as have many around the world. He will go down in history as one of the great boxers, especially in my time. The sunset of a career for any athlete is a difficult test. Age takes its toll, the body is completely exhausted over the years of training and fighting, and what it did before is now given with great difficulty, and in the case of Ali, Parkinson's disease has progressed. How you feel? How I feel? I feel with my hands. <laughs> There was understandable, frightening uncertainty in Ali's eyes, annoyance and chagrin, chagrin at the realization that his career had come to an end, and all because of the damned disease. He tried his best to laugh it off and did not want to submit to the inevitable. And everyone around knew it. But, nevertheless, the champion decided to enter the ring once again and prove to everyone that the desire to win is more than an ailment and any licenses and commissions, that each of us always has a choice, no matter what. In December 1981, Muhammad Ali fought his last fight in the professional ring against the strong and promising 27-year-old Canadian boxer Trevor Burbick. This time Ali looked much better than in the fight with Holmes. However, despite this, Ali lost by a unanimous decision in a 10-round bout. After this fight, Muhammad announced his retirement and never entered the professional ring again. Meanwhile, in another part of the United States of America, a young black boy was preparing and training to the fullest, who a year earlier had promised the greatest, during their private telephone conversation, to avenge him on his first abuser Larry Holmes. This guy was 15-year-old Mike Tyson. Seeing the second defeat of his idol in a row, Mike went berserk and continued his way to the top with even greater enthusiasm. At that moment, Mike Tyson decided not just to become a boxer, but to become the greatest of all time and take revenge on all Ali's offenders, and without bringing the fights to the final rounds. Tyson taking on Larry Holmes, yeah, a former WBC heavyweight champion, lost the title. Mike will keep his word to Ali and brutally knock out Holmes in 1988 in the fourth round. But before that, fate will offer him to deal with the one who forced the greatest to retire. Burbick showed neither respect nor fear for Tyson. At the pre-match press conference, he stated, He doesn't impress me. The guy has power, but that's about it. I will knock him out after the seventh round. No games. On the eve of the most important fight, Mike fell ill with gonorrhea, and the fight was in jeopardy. Tyson didn't care how he felt, he was determined. Because of the antibiotic, I felt a breakdown. But I was against canceling the fight. I should have punished Burbick. Already in the locker room before entering the ring, Tyson was determined to wipe Burbick off the face of the earth. He turned into a monster. As Tyson strode into the ring, he looked like a combination of those who had preceded him. He exuded the bravado of Sullivan and Johnson, while his haircut echoed Dempsey's. 
His fists carried the power of Marciano, Liston, and Foreman, and the slips and dives he demonstrated evoked the image of Joe Frazier. His technical skills was reminiscent of Lewis, and his defense was borrowed from Patterson. His ambition to be great matches Ali's. His attire was Spartan, black shorts, black boxing shoes, no socks, and a Hilton bath towel, probably stolen from a hotel room, with a head hole cut into it. A huge number of boxing and movie stars came to see the fight. Among them were Larry Holmes, Archie Moore, Thomas Hearns, Hector Camacho, Sylvester Stallone, Eddie Murphy, Kirk Douglas, and many others. Ali also came to support Tyson. It all ended unrealistically quickly, without even having time to really begin. It was a victory for Cuz, it was a victory for Ali, it was a victory for Tyson himself. Nobody could compare to him. The historic moment that Cuz D'Amato predicted has come true Mike Tyson has become the youngest world heavyweight champion. At the time of the fight he was 20 years old. It was my best fight. It's hard to convey the emotions that I felt at 20. It was like a dream.